Hello and welcome to Growth Insights number 13. I know we're a bit late with this one, we've been busy hiring and going international, but we're back. A little bit less tools than usual this time, but still lots of knowledge, so let's kick it off. Thanks to Ferdinand for finding this little gem. This is a small tool to see how your pages, landing pages, home pages, blog pages, recruitment pages would look on social without having to do a post on each one and then delete that post. See how your post is gonna look on Twitter, Facebook, Slack, and LinkedIn. It also gives you tips on how to improve the metadata and the images. Like I said, we're hiring like crazy at the moment, so we needed to check what our hiring pages look like when we share them on social. Really cool tool, check it out. Thanks to Almar and Ferdinand for sharing Lobe.ai on exactly the same day. This is a nifty tool you're gonna to wanna to play around with. It lets you build custom deep learning models, quickly train them, and ship them directly in your app with an interface that hides the coding. Before you play around with it yourself, you can check out some examples here. And if you really wanna dive deeper, you can read this article on how it actually works. Now, if you wanna dive even deeper into how neural networks work, thanks to David for sharing one of the best introduction videos to neural networks that I've seen online yet. It lasts about 18 minutes, but the speaker is extremely patient and goes step by step into what's a deep neural network and how it works from a mathematical point of view, highly recommended. Okay, and back to tools. This one's also pretty cool. It's called Seed Keywords. This basically allows you to create a small survey on what your customer's buyer journey looks like when they go through the online search process. So in this example, my customer wants to learn the skills of the future. I asked them what they would search for. You can then send it out to your target audience or hire some people on Mechanical Turk and you see the results. Thanks to Stefan for sharing this little gem. It's an amazing resource for UX and UI. We've shared uxarchive.com or useronboard.com in the past. Here's another teardown resource. Whether you're building a new landing page need a sweet new onboarding for your tool or looking to activate customers, check out some of the examples they have. For example, here's a teardown of the new IGTV functionality from Instagram. Really cool website to get lost in for five or 10 minutes. Speaking of resources, there's one slide deck which we anticipate the most every single year. Thanks to Peter for sharing Mary Meeker's new Internet Trends Report 2018. In it, you'll find out that the average US adult now spends six hours online per day. You'll find an approximation of Facebook's annualized revenue per daily user or that lifelong learning has become an integral part of anybody's career. Check out the slide deck, it's really long, but you can choose some data that's relevant for you. Speaking of charts and trends, Stefan shared this nifty tool. It allows you to generate your own internet trend charts per country and social demographics. Here's a similar one shared by Jean, but that focuses solely on Facebook user insights. Still on the topic of Facebook, thanks to Job for sharing a leaked functionality that could be coming out on the Facebook platform. Apparently they're working on an internal influencer search tool where you'll be able to search for influencers. Still on the subject of leaks and aggressive companies, thanks to Luke for sharing this little piece of information. This amazing document shows how aggressive Uber's playbook for recruiting Lyft drivers was. Burner phones, fast hiring pitches, you name it. Still in the news and on the subject of social media, you all know how obsessed we are with video content. Instagram is rolling out a video platform called IGTV. Now you've probably already heard about it, but if you haven't, check it out. Watch this short video to see how it works in under a minute. To make our video makers life even more simple, all of the videos are vertical. Still on the subject of Instagram, they released some news that they have a new functionality where you'll be able to buy directly inside the app and store your payment information. This is similar to an announcement that was made by Snapchat. Why is this interesting? It's interesting because we're finally getting closer to a Chinese WeChat experience where everything happens within the app, frictionless. Will we even need e-commerce websites for short sales cycle products anymore in the future? Speaking of China, check out this amazing video that shows you what a cashless, cardless society looks like. Okay, now for something completely different, we're gonna talk a little bit about time management, but with a different angle. We've come across two new time management principles that tackle the when rather than the what. One by Daniel H. Pink, which recommends doing analytical, difficult work in the morning when your brain is fresh, doing admin, emails, or repetitive tasks in the early afternoon, and then progressively getting back to social, creative, and collaborative tasks as the afternoon continues and turns into the evening. We'd recommend that you buy the book, or you can simply watch this RSA video, which explains the concept in detail. Here's a second time management principle. This one was shared by Stefan, and it comes from Google's Connor Svensson. Connor recommends breaking your day into me time, make time, and meet time. And what's really interesting is booking this time in your calendar beforehand. So people can still add stuff to your calendar, but you decide what type and when. Here's my favorite new blog of the past month. I can't believe I didn't know about this yet. It's called BooleanStrings.com. We discovered it at the Sourcing Summit in London. Boolean Strings is a long collection of small, usually gray hat tools and tactics to find targeted people online. It's well worth losing an hour on it. It mostly covers email and LinkedIn and it's very gray hat, so be careful. Speaking of LinkedIn, here's one Julia found. Did you know if you're part of a LinkedIn group, you can send direct messages to the members of the group without even having them as connections. So you might be thinking, is this GDPR compliant? And are you still having trouble answering some of these questions? Here's a little bit of reading for you. It's a small GDPR section of the video. First small GDPR tip, 
read this article. It's a short and to the point article that will help your marketing team when faced with six or seven typical scenarios. As we like to repeat, GDPR usually comes down to basic common sense. One more tip on GDPR. Jim shared this cool overview from Google on how to implement a GDPR compliant cookie consent. Last one on GDPR. Thanks to Ferdinand for sharing GDPR email copy.com, which is a long list of GDPR compliant email templates. So you don't need to write them anymore. Go ahead and copy paste. Okay, and this is the actual last one on GDPR. I really promise this time. This is a GDPR documentation template that was shared by Everlaw. Basically, it takes you step by step and you need to be able to see if you can answer these questions, yes or no. Okay, back to cool tools and resources. Let's talk virality a little bit. Thanks to Mauritz for sharing this virality tool. Apart from the tool itself, they have a beautiful section that gives you inspiration for viral campaigns, whether you can run contests, sweepstakes, referral campaigns, and how to actually promote them. Check out the tool and check out the example. This one's a little bit gimmicky, but thanks to Luke for sharing the Google of favicons. It allows you to look for favicons on any website. Simply type the name of the website in and the favicon will show up. Now for less gimmicky tools, but more marketing automation. At Growth Tribe, we're huge fans of Zapier. The whole team of 40 people knows how to create their own zaps. Here's a little bit of a loftier, more powerful version of Zapier, which allows you to integrate manual processes. If you want to automate those repetitive tasks that you do every day or create workflows, check it out. Now, speaking of automation, many of the automation tools that we refer to are not compliant to larger organizations. Thanks to Yob for sharing Elastic.io. Think of it as a Zapier for corporates, for larger organizations that can be deployed on your own servers. Still on tools, now I'm going to talk about little updates. We're total geeks at Growth Tribe. I realized that when the team started getting excited about new spreadsheet functionalities. Thanks to Stefan for getting super excited about a new tick box functionality that's been added to Google Sheets. Here's some cool examples of what you can do with it. And here's proof that Stefan really gets excited about this stuff. Speaking of enthusiasm for Google Drive, Job shared a really cool feature on Google accounts. Did you know that you can set an expiration date for a file? So if it's a spreadsheet, a presentation, a Google drawing, you can actually set an expiration date for when that file is no longer accessible. And here's another kind of cool one. This one was shared by Sam. If someone's ever struggling to understand our slide decks because it's not their native language, there's an easy add-on for Google Slides, which actually enables you to use Google Translate for your decks in one click. Of course, the translation isn't perfect, but it gets 80% of the job done. Two more on new functionalities of products that we love to use. Ferdinand shared that Intercom is getting into the business messaging game with the release of their Messenger. And finally, speaking of tools that we love that are adding new features, Segment has also released a new feature called Personas, which allows you to unify user history across devices and channels, synthesize data into traits, audiences, and actually build predictions for each customer. This is promising for lookalike audience, and we've requested a demo. We'll let you know how it goes. And now for something completely different. Remember that Google duplex video where Google Voice seems to pass the Turing test by ordering an appointment at a hair salon? Thanks to Ferdinand for sharing an article on how that technology actually works. Beautiful move from Google. Google getting more powerful and more impressive daily. What's also interesting is that it seems they've removed don't be evil from their code of conduct. Two more tools and a resource before we go. Thanks to Matteo for sharing CallRail. CallRail allows our sales team to be data-driven with phone calls, time of calls, conversion rates per calls, you name it. What's interesting is that it changes the number per user so you can track calls in Google Analytics and other tracking tools. And you can set up conversions based on these calls. And then finally, the last one, we've been really focused on blockchain for the past two months because we're building a new blockchain course. Thanks to Yob for sharing this one. It's called crapcoin.solutions and it's to build your own shitcoin. It's to show you how easy it is to build your own coin on the Ethereum blockchain. It's what they call shitcoins. It's coins that have no value and no real purpose. And I've actually created my own. It's actually called Tetherium. Ferdinand came up with that name and it's for decentralized teeth. Okay, and I want to recommend one more thing before we go. We're all about tools and tactics and technology, but sometimes it's good to get back to the fundamentals. I'd like to share this four-part series on mass persuasion and mass manipulation. In this four-part series discovered on Reddit, we discover Edward Bernays. He's the lesser known yet just as influential figure of the Freud family who, inspired by his uncle's work on the subconscious, embraced mass persuasion and basically created public relations. The lessons in here are as relevant today as ever. This is a fantastic series. Skip Netflix tonight and we'll see you really soon.